All right, let's talk about fibrous hamartoma of infancy. There's a really nice example here. This would be a six month old boy with a skin colored nodule near the axilla. And um, you can see that it's not any real central mass. I think that's one of the most helpful things from low power on these is it's very haphazard and there's fibrous stuff in here and some areas of cellularity mingled with fat, but it doesn't really have like a central dominant mass. It's all just tangled up. And I think that that's very helpful. This kind of patchy quilt-like haphazard pattern. Then uh, these are areas of fascicular uh, bland fibroblasts that make nice fascicles that are a little bit wavy as dense collagen tends to do. Waviness in spindle cells with collagen usually is not nerve despite uh, the original teachings, uh, but actually is more often a fibroblast when you have the really, really crinkly wavy collagen like we see here. And then these are the beautiful areas of immature mesenchyme. And that's what you can see there. And so that's the triad of things we're looking for in fibrous hamartoma is mature fat, fibroblasts making fascicles, and little clusters of this immature mesenchyme that is either kind of spindle to stellate to almost round looking cells that are kind of uniform that don't look like any other normal tissue type. In a, uh, and then they often have a bit of a mixoid background to them. And so the reason that it's important to know about fibrous hamartoma is that if you don't see those nodules of immature mesenchyme, it's uh, understandable that you could encounter some areas like this where you have honeycomb-like fat entrapment and think about DFSP. So it's really important to not make that mistake, obviously, because fibrous hamartoma is benign and um, uh, DFSP obviously is not. So just be aware that, uh, that you can have fat entrapment in fibrous hamartoma. And there's again a look at the fascicles of fibroblasts. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say about that is that in my experience, it's, it's really, I don't know if I've ever seen a DFSP that has this pattern of fascicles. Usually DFSPs are story form pattern like we talked about in part one of this lecture. Um, and when, you, or even a little bit haphazard sometimes, when you see fascicles, it's usually hypercellular fascicles and it's going to be in uh, the fibrosarcomatous type. So to have these well-formed, very hypocellular fascicles is something that's very, very rare, if ever. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a case that looked quite exactly like that. So, so in any case, I find it kind of reassuring that when I see fascicles like this, I might be dealing with something else, either fibrous hamartoma of infancy or um, CD34 positive uh, fibroblastic connective tissue nevus, which is a benign entity that can mimic uh, DFSP sometimes, or, um, or dermatomyofibroma. Those are all things that have hypocellular parallel fascicles of, of bland fibroblasts or myofibroblasts. And there's the mesenchyme. And uh, this is a, a slide I like to show just to help you remember that fat trapping uh, can be seen in a variety of different entities. Only one of these is DFSP. And you might have figured out by looking at it, I mean, it is a bit more cellular. So this is the actual DFSP here. That over there is a, on the left is a diffuse type neurofibroma. Here's a fibrous hamartoma in the center. And then there's real DFSP right there. So not always is fat trapping DFSP. Okay, so a few tips and pearls about that, like we just mentioned about the fat trapping. CD34 can stain a lot of different things, including neurofibroma. Most neurofibromas have quite a bit of CD34 expression. So if you're ever between diffuse neurofibroma and DFSP, add an S100 or SOX10 with your 34. It's extremely, I used to say never would DFSP be positive for S100 or SOX10, but you know, that's the problem. If you say never, eventually you'll get proven wrong. And I have in fact seen one, only one example. Uh, it was fibrosarcomatous DFSP, uh, translocation confirmed, and it had patchy, but very real S100 expression in the fibrosarcomatous areas. So it's still on my to-do list to maybe write that up as a case report one day, but I would say it's exquisitely rare. And again, if uncertain, um, you can use FISH for collagen 1A1 PDGFB. And uh, if that's negative, you can reflex the PDGFD. The, the most common time actually that I do FISH for DFSP is when I think it's probably not DFSP, but I've got a bland CD34 positive spindle cell lesion and a small biopsy. So I'm either gonna say this is benign, leave it alone, or I'm gonna say go back and do a big surgery. And so um, uh, 
uh, I could also, I guess, just send them back to get me a bigger sample. But then sometimes I might still be uncertain about the diagnosis. And then we've delayed care even longer and had an extra procedure in between. So I feel like it's easier to just go ahead and do the fish and get the, the def as close to a definitive answer as we can right off the, the bat uh, at, on the biopsy. So that's the way I handle those cases. So, so oftentimes when I send a uh, fish for DFSP, it comes back negative because the times I'm using it are uh, when I'm pretty sure it's not, but I just want to be 100% or as close to 100% as we can be with these things.